Today I am going to tell you everything you need to know about the upcoming material trader and at the end of the video I am going to give you a neat little trick that is going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to gathering materials in Elite Dangerous. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today we are looking at the material trader. This is a new upcoming feature in the Beyond series that allows you to trade material from one tier to another. Um, so if you have a surplus of one, you can get some other materials or data for that matter. But first of all, there are three base types of material traders. If you go in here to the galaxy map and we go over here and select uh, services from this menu, we can now see we have material trader raw, we have material trader manufactured and material trader encoded. The raw material trader will trade um, base elements like iron and nickel, um, the stuff you will normally pick up from rocks on the surface of a planet. The manufactured material trader will trade in the stuff you would find lying around at Dav's Hope or at uh, the, the tanker. Um, so that would be like uh, chemical manipulators or stuff like that. Um, and the encoded one is the one that it trades in the data, so like wake exceptions, cracked industrial firmware, modified modified firmware, that stuff that you have in your data storage. It seems right now though on the beta that uh, that the filters here are not working. You can see none of these um, uh, filters are doing anything to the stars, even though I know some of the around surrounding systems here do have material traders, especially the system that I'm currently in. Um, so I hope this is something Frontier is going to fix before this goes live. I assume it is at least. Oh, that, now it's working. See that one light up there. Okay, so it, it's somewhat working. It's worked a little bit, but it's still a little janky. Um, but anyway, um, so when you go in to, uh, to your main menu here, you go to contact, you can now see you have a material trader. And this one here is a encoded material trader, as you can see. So I've not found anyone that has multiple different. I'm not sure if that's even possible. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see about that. But I don't think you can have multiple material traders at the same station. So you'll have to move around. But anyway, when we are in here, we can now have all the different materials. And you can see that they're divided into subcategories. So for instance, here we have a subcritical called shield data where we have the distorted shield cycle recordings that goes from the tier one and all the way up to peculiar shield frequency data, which is the grade five. Um, and you can now trade between these. For instance, let's go down and look at encoded firmware. Let's say uh, I have a lot of modified embedded firmware and let's say that I want saw a security firmware patch. I can click here and I could then click uh, on a modified embedded. I could tell how much I want to trade in. Let's use these uh, data archives, for example, because we have, uh, have some of both here. So we can look at the ratios here. Let's cancel that for now. So if I want classified scan fragments, I will click it and I want to trade in divigant scan data. We can see here that I have a six to one trade ratio. That means that I'm trading in six divigant scan data to gain one classified um, scan fragment. And if I'm trading the other way, so that's trading downwards. I'm no, sorry, that's trading, that's trading upwards. When I'm taking a lower material and trading up to a higher higher grade, I pay six to gain one. But if I trade down, so if I want the dividend scan data, we can see now that the trade ratio is one to three. That means that I'm paying one of the higher tiers to get three of the lower tiers. So it's more efficient to trade downwards than it is to trade upwards, um, because well, yeah, yeah, you get even though you get less here, but it's it's a lot more expensive. So you have to pay six to uh, to get one here, while you will only get three in return. So it's very expensive to trade upwards. Um, and that's important because of the new way that materials is stored. If we go over here to our inventory, we can now see that where we before had a maximum cap of a uh, of a thousand material in the materials, I think five hundred in data. From the other way around, can't remember. That doesn't matter. From now on, we're gonna have a cap of 100 on each material, and that's gonna that's mean when you go out and you look for new materials, there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't pick up everything you find. 
So when you're at Dab's Hope, you pick up everything. When you're at the Tanker, you pick up everything. If you have Collector Limpets. When you're out doing Bounty Hunting, fit a Collector Limpet controller and just have a Limpet fly around and pick up everything that the ship's dropped. So there's no reason not to. Um, unless, of course, you're absolutely capped on everything. Then, then you don't have to. But now there's no reason not to pick up everything you find. Um, and I should also say here that you can also do uh, cross-subtype trading. That means, let's say I wanted some uh, classified scan fragments. I could also trade other tier 5 or lower tiers if I had the materials for it. Uh, if I cancel click here, for instance. Um, I don't have any lower tier where I have enough materials to do it. But if I had enough, for, for, for instance, if I had 36 open symmetric keys, I could trade all of those in to get just one here. Now, that's very expensive. And you can see here, cross-trading, you are trading... Uh, six to uh, to one, same as if you trade from a lower tier up. Um, so these two, of course, are the same. So cross subtype trading is very, very expensive, and I would not recommend that you do that. What I recommend you do is if you're looking for materials um, and you need several materials in the same subcategory, I would always just go for the high materials and then downgrade them to the lower materials because then you don't have to go to that many different places. Of course, if you have a hard time finding the high grade materials, you can get the tier 4 and upgrade them. Um, but let's do a quick example here because with the way the engineering is done right now, you need to, on a new module, upgrade first tier 1, then tier 2, then tier 3, tier 4, and then finally you can do the final tier 5 upgrades. Um, and you need uh, so between two to five, sometimes six rolls to go up one tier if you're very unlucky in the height. The lower tiers, we often need one or two rolls, and then maybe two or three rolls here, and you need more and more rolls the higher the tier is. So let's say that I'm in this situation. Let's say I need, I want 10 of each of the lower tiers here. Um, and I only have some modified and better firmware. I could go out and I could look for 10 of each of these, and it would probably take some time. But how many additional modified and better firmware would I need to just get 10. I would actually only need to pick up two extra modified and better firmware because every time I pick one up, of course, I would gain six units in here. It's because let's say that I um, that I take here and I want some uh, security firmware patches and I want to trade in some modified and better firmware. I'll do that and I could trade in five, confirm the trade, gives us five, 15 security firmware patches. I could now go to crack industrial firmware Trade in the security firmware patches. Oh, trade in five again. Confirm the trade. And you can see that now we spent... Um, we now spent five of them, so we have 10 left. And we gained 15, so we can do the same over and over again. And trade down like that. I should say you can jump over categories. So, for instance, if I wanted some uh, unidentified scan archives, I can choose to use these, and then I would gain nine. It's the same ratio if you go step by step, or if you just jump over several tiers. It's the same result in uh, in the end. Um, and I could do it with the last one here as well, five. So you can see, I just traded in five modified embedded firmware to gain 10 of each, and actually 15 of the last one. So if you're out and you're looking for the, you need the higher tier materials anyway, and you are farming for that, uh, grinding for it, whatever you're doing, um, I would just recommend picking up a few extras so you have everything on the lower tiers as well, because picking up two extras will give you enough to upgrade the module all the way up to tier 5. So that's a very, very, um, very useful uh, tip. But if you don't want to go to this material trader every single time to look what the different subcategories are, I have a little trick for you. And that is to use the spreadsheet I made some time ago. Um, many of you are already familiar with this, but some time ago I made a spreadsheet with all the engineering materials, as you can see here. Um, and all of them, or most of them, have links to video guides where I describe how you can get them, where you need to go, what you need to do to get the specific material. I use this a lot myself. I originally made this just to myself, but then decided that why not just share it with the rest of the community because a lot of other people probably find this very useful as well. You see there are some, um, some missing ones here and there, but there is, in general, there is links for pretty much all the major materials you're going to need. And I have now added the subtype in here, along with the grade. 
So let's say that I needed cracked industrial firmware. I would go and I would look up cracked industrial firmware, which is right here. It's of course data and it, it says here that the subtype is encoded firmware patch. So now I could go up here, if I highlight these uh, the top uh, columns here, just the names here, highlight those, go to data, field of view, create temporary field of view. When you do that, you now gain these drop downs. So I can now go to the subtypes, I can clear it, and then go and find the encrypted firmware. And now it only shows me the materials within that subcategory. I can then go and look and see where can I get those different um, different materials. There are video links out here. Um, and then you can just go and figure out what you want to do. For instance, you can see here, okay, we want to go and look at the, um, at the modified embedded firmware because that was the grade five one. Wait, that's not right. Oh yeah, modified embedded firmware. Um, I will then go and I could uh, could look at the um, at the video. There we go, and uh, then th th take you to the video that describes what you need to do. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. I could put a link for this spreadsheet in the, in the description down below. Um, or the little trick with the with the filters is is very, very handy. It makes it a lot easier, especially now that we have the material traders. So you can go. And, um, and filter and figure out what you need in the specific subcategory. But anyway, if you found this video useful, give it a like down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, there's also a link to Patreon down below. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.